Hey, what's going on guys? Eddie here with another video. Thank you for tuning in. Today's video is quite special because if you watched my latest video, you would know that I was quite disappointed with some of the aspects of the DJI FPV drone's camera. In today's video, luckily, I found a way to overcome some of these issues and make your footage look more cinematic and overall better quality using ND filters. This drone combined DJI drones and FPV drones used to live in their very own worlds up until the day that DJI released the DJI FPV drone. This drone combines all the amazing features that DJI always brings to the table, like safety, quality, and obstacle avoidance, with the amazing adrenaline-inducing activity of flying FPV. So now the best worlds are combined into one. This is actually a toy more than a filmmaking tool due to the limited camera recording quality. As some of you may know, FPV pilots are already incorporating cinema cameras to their FPV drones. So FPV cinematography is already a thing and it's been a thing for a while. DJI knows this. That is why I was kind of disappointed and confused as to why DJI didn't try to make this camera slightly better. But then again, I do understand that this is their first FPV drone and they still need to test some waters to see how the market is like until they come out with a way better drone. I'm sure that the DJI FPV2 is going to be significantly better than this one. Luckily, there is a way to improve your DJI FPV drone's camera and make the footage look more cinematic and overall maximize your drone investment. And that is by using ND filters. So make sure to like and subscribe and let's jump right into the video. Thank you so much for subscribing if you have done so. So I'm not being sponsored or being paid by anyone for this video, but I came across these ND filters by Freewell, which are really, really good. And they came out really quickly as well. Probably like a few days right after this drone came out. So props to them for that. These filters come with ND number four, eight, 16, and 32. These ND filters are crucial if you want your DJI FPV drone to create cinematic looking footage. So if you're interested in these at all at any point in the video, you can always find them in the description below. Ooh, it's chilly. Remember, this drone does not come with an adjustable aperture and therefore we are way more limited when it comes to exposing our image and make the overall image feel cinematic. Without an adjustable aperture or without ND filters, we would have to crank up the shutter speed up to one over 2000, which does not make the image look very great, even though it does expose it properly. Having a shutter that high though, is going to mess with your motion blur, sharpness, focus, and cinematics of your overall video. Can't really do anything about the dynamic range of this camera, but what we can do is increase the motion blur and decrease the focus and decrease the sharpness. Those last two things, I know that sounds counterintuitive, but that is in fact how we achieve cinematic footage. Thanks to these ND filters, I can increase the motion blur without overexposing my image. So let's jump right in the settings so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. In order to create natural looking motion blur, our shutter speed needs to be double our frame rate. So today I'm going to be shooting at 4K at 60 frames per second. To settings, and then navigate to camera, and then going camera parameters. So now we get all of our options. So in order for me to shoot at 4K at 60 frames per second, even though that is already set up in our menu back here, as we can see right there, in camera parameters, this is where I'm going to decide how to expose the image by keeping the 4K 60 frames per second in mind. So in order to adjust the exposure properly, I gotta go here and then manual, then I'm gonna go back and go to ISO, I'm gonna keep at 100. And as we can see, our ideal shutter is in fact 120. So if we double our frame rate, our shutter speed will be one over 120 as opposed to one over 2000. One over 120 is what's going to give us our natural looking motion blur. One over 2000 will never get us that ideal motion blur that we are looking for. However, if I set my shutter speed to one over 120, there will be way too much light coming in. So the next step would be to close down the aperture to reduce light coming in. But unfortunately, the DJI FPV, unlike the DJI Mavic 2 Pro, doesn't have one. So in order for me to adjust the shutter speed properly here, I literally have to go to at least one over 2000. And as we can see, the image is exposed back to normal kind of. ISO is at 100, shutter speed is one over 2000 in order to keep the image properly exposed and we're shooting at 4K at 60 frames per second. Let's go fly now and let's see what the footage looks like. So as, as we can clearly tell, there isn't much motion blur going on. As you can see down here, all these trees are perfectly in focus and 
they're very, very sharp, which again, it sounds like it's supposed to be like that. But in fact, when you're shooting for cinematics, you're not looking to have every single thing in the shot uh, perfectly in focus. In fact, in our case here, this does not look cinematic at all. It kind of looks like a child's drone or even a video game. And that's because everything is in focus. It looks a little bit too perfect and there's nothing cinematic about that. Cinematics comes when an image looks like it was captured by a human's eye and our eyes capture motion blur when we're moving fast. That's why when I went in sport mode and everything was still sharp and in focus, it's a dead giveaway that it's not cinematic at all. Of course, it's all very smooth and it looks very crisp and nice, but there's no way this footage is passable on a cinematic standpoint. So now I'm going to add the ND filter to the drone and I'm going to go back into my camera settings to adjust the settings to properly expose the image and make the image look as cinematic as possible. Put pressure on this side of the gimbal and grab the ND filter like laterally like that and then slowly go in and then spin clockwise or counterclockwise, doesn't really matter. Just make sure it's fixed. Okay, so now that we have our ND filter on, we can finally adjust the video settings to our ideal cinematic settings. So as I previously mentioned, I'm going to be shooting at 4K at 60 frames per second, and therefore our ideal shutter speed is going to be 1 over 120 there. So now we can finally have our shutter set to the ideal settings without overexposing our image, thanks to the ND filter. Okay, so now let's try flying again, this time with our ND filter. Now please note that in order to actually see the motion blur happening, you have to fly quite close to objects. Today I didn't want to fly close to objects because I am still new at FPV flying and I didn't want to risk that liability. However, please note guys that in order to really see motion blur, you do have to fly near objects. But even if you're not planning on flying near objects, ND filters are still important for your drone because regardless of whether you're flying near objects or not, the ideal shutter speed is double your frame rate, the 180 rule. So whether you're a beginner FPV pilot or a full-on professional expert, ND filters are still for you regardless of how close you want to fly near objects. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Make sure to leave a like or subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.